there's a lot of history left behind. All these people told a story that were once here are now gone, buried in all these little tombs that are above ground. And I am way below New Orleans, which means I'm a lot deeper south into Louisiana. I'd say maybe about an hour from the very bottom of Louisiana. Like I said, all these tell a story. And something that's interesting about this little plot that we're in, there's water on the other side. I think they have like a little barrier that's keeping it, the water out. We'll see when we get closer. There's a hill right there where they have tombs buried on top of them, which I've never seen that before. And that's really, that's unique actually. And if you look on this side, it's a lot of water. All of this is water. Alligators, snakes, any deadly type of reptiles. We're gonna have to watch out because I'm pretty sure they'll be in this area. what I came across. It's a big old ball of ice. To prove it to you. It moved. Ugh. Some disgusting water. There's a fence on this side, it's keeping out some of the water. It looks like I see like trash and whatnot. And if you look down right where I'm walking, this is starting to sink into the ground. Which means it's a low, low water, low, low line water area. And there you go. That's pretty much the swamp. That's actually quite cool. Look how their tomb is buried on top. Well, their tomb is on top of uh, someone else's tomb. I've never seen that before. That's a child's grave. I don't see no dates or anything, but that's a child. Alright, I don't know what this really represents, besides it looks like it's a cross, or somebody made a cross. That's got sand and a candle, or sand and candles inside cups. Same with over there. Oh, and also back there. That's cool. And then look at that. That little grave right there. Aw. Oh, that's really scary. It's a little baby's grave right there. Right there in that little casket. been a while since we've seen one of these. It shows you how far deep it goes when they put a body in there. And I think that was meant for like a little baby, a little child. This is how close I am to the water. And we're almost to the Gulf of Mexico. Pretty close, but not too, too far from it. People actually live right across from this little cemetery. It's actually not too far from it. You can pretty much just get their boat, come out to the entrance, 
or you can pretty much just drive down here. Here's really old headstone markers. I'm pretty sure those are the early 1800s or sometime between 1800s all the way to early 1900s. I'm glad they put up that wall to keep the water out from the cemetery and you can tell they're still working on it. So I wonder how far this thing actually goes. They have a cement maker out there. And it looks like they're trying to add on to something, some type of some type of cover or something on top of the metal. And you can tell they're getting they're going higher with it too. Because over there, looks like they started painting on it, it's all ready to go. Looks like they're making another little section to make that higher. And then I guess that's the wall right there. In memory of Melvin Cripple, I guess. May 5th, 13, 1969. All the way to t December 2nd, 19, ow, 1992. There's another monument. So it's like a bayou with a fish on the top. And then on the other one, it's like it's a big old shrimp boat some type of boat that's used for fishing in the south other places too but you see them more common in the south I found somebody that was in World War II Phillips Jordan, the Louisiana Tech 5, U.S. Army. He was born June 28, 1908, and he died February 5, 1970. Thank you for fighting in the World War II, man. I forgot to mention, look at this big old oak tree. That's, it's in a nice spot. It's giving all these little graves their shade. Alright, let's go up on that hill. I want to see a couple of them graves up there. I'm curious to see how they got them up there too. This is one of the bigger tombs that are left open. This is more for an adult. Alright, like I said, let's get up there. Someone actually buried at the very tip top. He was born, looks like October 17, 1920. Died March 31st, 1888. That was actually pretty cool to see. Cool content, thank you, Mr. Boat. I wonder what his story is that he is buried on this little mountain around every other tomb.
So look at this. All the way around, nothing but a mountain. They got a little fence right there, iron fence. Somebody did some decoration. We gotta go check that out in a couple seconds. But let's just enjoy the view up here. It's a dead tree. The trees of Louisiana are really, really beautiful. Well, time to walk down this hill. Hopefully they don't fall. Let's go check out the decoration. Or decoration, sorry. What is this? I'm not going to open it, but I wonder what that is. You can tell somebody just actually put this together not too long ago. They're celebrating their family member, even though they've passed away. It's still interesting. It goes to show that they care, which is a good thing. And I like how they got pinatas. There's three of them all up on the trees or hanging on the trees. And they got a Florida Lee symbol. And here's all the little gifts that are on the ground that people, that the family members left down. And I think it's because of this right here. I'm thinking these are three baby graves. I'm thinking those are three baby graves. Might be wrong, but they kind of look like it a little bit. Look at how those two those two grave marks are like they're laid like that. The bodies the bodies are buried underneath all that. And that's that hill that I just went up to to that person who's buried in the ground. And it looks like you can't see it that well, but there's like a little bush. I wonder if someone's buried there. It's hard to say because a lot of these graves, if you look around, they're all mashed together. But I think that's how they designed it back in the day, honestly. But I don't know really. And there's another one of those graves that are on top of each other. Right there. You can see it's on top of that one. I'm guessing they're probably family members. Pretty sure. Isaac and Charlotte. a pretty bizarre cemetery. I mean pretty bizarre grave. There's flowers growing on top of the, the tomb. Interesting. I'm guessing that's her name. Eve Maria Varin. I probably butchered the name, sorry, but I think that's who that is. This pretty much sums up the cemetery. There's not really much here else to see besides just graves, loved ones, history, and of course people buried on top of that little mountain up there. Multiple people, not just one, multiple. 
And it looks like people are giving tours of something. I couldn't really tell exactly. But I heard the guy say something about the... He was talking about the cemetery when I was trying to film. So I don't know exactly what it means. And a unique grave marker. Or headstone. It's a book. Look at that. Or kind of looked like... It is a book. You see like pages. Like little crevices. It's cool. A little baby grave marker. And look at this. You can't sit in there, but the casket's right in there. And it's exposed to air. Creepy. There are some very strange tombs in this cemetery. I don't know if that's an actual way it's... Is that a baby grave? Headstone? I don't know. And then, look at this one. This one's layered up on two layers. Just look at the size of that oak tree. I've already showed it once, but look at it again. It looks nice all by these graves. So this is pretty much the entire cemetery. It's not that big, but it does, it does look pretty cool. That hill is over there. Declarations. There's a World War II veteran buried way back there with the American flag, which you probably can't really see it unless I did this. That's one of the World War II veterans buried up on that hill. This thing right here is something frightening. I'm pretty sure that's a newborn that's buried in the ground. There's no name, no date. It's just a little monument, a little grave site for him. Spooky. Very, very spooky. You just don't know when your time's going to be.